guys. Welcome to the Tom Reefer Studio. Here's the 20 gallon cube. Mixed reef. I had to cut a little of the leather off. That's why it's looking like that. And I put it down in a little cup in there. And here's a 3.5 gallon Pico. LPS dominated. It's really growing. These Duncans are getting out of control. And here's the six gallon tall. That's a mixed reef. And here's the new addition, the 10 gallon Pico. I just added some fish last week. There they are. Six line wrasse and orchid dotty back. Everybody's getting along and there's a shrimp in there. Today's water change Wednesday and it's all gonna happen right here today. How's it going guys? I figured I'd switch it up a little today. So anyway, new viewers, Water Change Wednesday is a Q&A, question and answer. You ask a question below the video in the comments section. I'll answer it there, and then I try to get to it here. Just looking at the new additions to the 10. Thanks for your comments, guys. A lot of you have been giving me a little feedback on the new fish. I haven't had a six-line wrasse or an orchid dotty back before. I did a little research and the guy in the LFS said that they would be okay. So you never know with fish, we'll have to see. And I have a peppermint shrimp in here. So anyway, new viewers, this is Water Change Wednesday. It's a Q&A. You ask me a question out in the comments section below the video and I'll answer it there. And then I try to answer it here depending on how many I get. Today we're gonna answer some questions on SPS, a couple personal questions, which are fine, a couple lighting questions, ramping, those issues. We said it was the spaghetti worm last week. Climbing up the glass, spaghetti worm was the consensus. I looked it up, it's a spaghetti worm. We also have questions on using Kalkwasser only as your addition for calcium in your tank. So we get a lot of good ones. All right, let's get into it. Water Change Wednesday. Rudra asks, I'm paraphrasing now. He's got a 12 gallon nano reef right now and he's solely relying on water changes for his calcium addition. He says he's doing two week water changes. I'm assuming he's doing those twice a month. And he wants to know, he's thinking about upgrading to a 20 gallon and he sees that I dose calcium and alkalinity. And for that matter, I also dose Kalkwasser and he wants to know if he can rely on water changes only to keep his calcium and alkalinity stable. Some people have done that, guys. All I can say, and I've said this before, as soon as I started dosing, my tank looked 100% better. And I believe it gets that way because you're balancing the amount of calcium and alkalinity that you put in your tank. If you're just relying on water changes, what happens after that week that you've done the water change, nothing is going in and your calcium may be used up or being depleted. So by the next time you do your water change, you have a fluctuation. You may be low in calcium and alkalinity. I always recommend at least water change and Kalkwasser in your ATO. That's what my 10 gallon is right now. So we'll use that as a test. Right now, all I'm doing is dosing Kalkwasser in my ATO and relying on water changes with the 10 gallon peninsula. So let's see what happens. Northwest FPWL asks me, do I have my own family? I'm assuming he means, do I have a family? I guess you guys are my reefing family. This is the deal with my family, guys. I have five children. 
a group of three from a first marriage. They're all grown up way back when I was a young, young guy. A group of two from a second marriage, and I don't have children with Sylvia. She has her own. Despite the storm that hears, we're still on board. Dancing in the moonlight, the world just up and stay. The way we handle our marriage now is she lives in Croatia. This is answering another question. She lives in Croatia. Her children are high school age. I live here and we have a long distance relationship. So I go every eight weeks or she comes here every eight weeks and we do a lot of FaceTiming. So this is how we handle it. I'll be right back. See? So anyway, we've been together eight years now, Sylvia and I. We were married three and a half years ago. It's just taken me a long time to figure out who I am. And that may seem kind of deep and weird, but the bottom line is unless you kind of know who you are, you're going to kind of search and look around and make mistakes. Uh, as I look back at it, I don't look at any of the things that I did as mistakes. I look at them as events that occurred that helped me move forward to where I am now. If you want to unsubscribe, go ahead. G asks, how do I dose my nanos. The only one I'm dosing right now is the 20 gallon. I dose that with sea balance, calcium and alkalinity, and it's 10 mils per day, and it's on a timer, so they come on in the evening, late evening, and early, early morning, so it's a consistent level going in every day. I only dose with Kalkwasser in my ATO in the rest of the tanks. I think the last question or two were blurry, because all right, Chris asks me, Chris asks me about how I reinforce my shelves on the cabinet that holds the 20 gallon and the 3.5 gallon Pico. The 20 gallon is just a solid cabinet. It was really a solid, well-built cabinet, so nothing special on that. And the 3.5 gallon, I did reinforce it with little strips of wood. I use some wood screws and that holds the weight, but that's only like 30 pounds. So that's not, that's not much more than piling a big stack of books on there. I just wanted to say thanks to you guys too. I got a lot of comments on my opinion on small nano reefs and then going up. I mean, that was all my opinion. That's what I found. And I appreciate that you uh, saw what I was trying to say and weren't real negative about it. I mean, you may have some negative feelings. A lot of people say, man, I'm going up. I'm going up inside. I want more, you know, and that's fine. I'm not saying you're wrong or whatever, but I appreciate the positive comments. Sometimes opinions that I give, you may disagree. So if you want to point out a disagreement, try to say it in a nice way. We'll keep it nice here so I don't have to delete your message. Jay asked about flow in a mixed reef tank. So I gave him my view on what I do in my 20. And I've answered this before, but you know what, guys? I can't even remember where they're answered. We're on Water Change Wednesday 32, I think now, or 33, I lost track. And what I told him is I favor stronger flow than lighter flow for many reasons. Detritus collecting in between the rocks, not enough flow if you're gonna have mixed reef, SPS, you need a lot. So what I have done, and I've told you before, I have an NP10, which is a very powerful pump. It can be, it's controllable. But I put that in the back of the aquarium and I run it at about 50%. And that's enough flow to push around the back of the tank, up the left side, and across the front. So by the time the flow gets to the right side of my 20 gallon, it's kind of subdued. And if you'll notice, that's where all my softies and things that don't require a strong flow. And then I have the return coming back right straight towards the front and that's hitting my SPS. So that's the way I do it. And it's really been successful for me. Jibe47 asks, he wants to add some macro algae to his 10 gallon. He asked me if I cut my Chato Morpha every week. I haven't cut my Chato in my refugium in the 20 gallon in I would say six to eight weeks. It's growing in abundance, but I only pull it out when it's so packed in there 
that it can't grow anymore. It starts growing up out of the water, but I don't rely on Chato solely as a denitrifier. I mentioned this in another video. The refugium in my tank, and it can be in yours as well, is more of another mini ecosystem in there. It's got a lot of stuff growing, and I think what it does is it's competing with my display area. I have a tassia growing in there, an ugly looking algae, everything grows in that. So if I take it out, I notice when I take too much out, it changes the balance of my aquarium because now the water is passing through there. It stirs things up. I am a firm believer in if your tank looks good, don't do anything out of the ordinary that you haven't been doing. And I might take a little off the top if it starts growing out, but that's all I'm doing. My 20 gallon looks the best it's looked. It just looks really good and I don't want to mess with it. Adi asked me what the mounting height of my light on the peninsula tank is. What I like to do, Hadi, on my height with my lights, I don't like to have them too high because then a lot of the light spreads over the tank. So I try to determine where the center focus of the tank will be, which is usually in the center, and then allow some light to spill off to the side. So in my 10 gallon, I just did par readings the other night too, guys. Par readings on the peninsula with the new light, the sole, is 400 up on the top. Then as I go straight down to the bottom center, it's 200, 250 around in there. And then out to the sides, it goes down to about 90 and 80, which is good for a lot of coral. So I have various ranges in the 10 gallon where I can put different types of corals in there. All right, guys, that's got to be it. I lose track of how many questions I ask. I just go right up the iPad. Whoops. I just go right up. I just go right up the iPad and scroll through and try to do the best I can. They're not rehearsed. I mean, I do. If I rehearse them, they'd come out even worse. So anyway, I think that's enough for today, right? Yeah, I agree. So have a great rest of the night and I'll see you Sunday. Take care now.